today we're talking about M48, which is one of several mystery objects in the Messier catalogue, and I'm going to call it the Lost and Found Cluster. It's an open cluster, a collection of 80 or so stars, and it was first recorded by Charles Messier in 1771. But the mystery is that when you go to the position that he wrote down, there's nothing there. He recorded that he discovered a cluster of very small stars without nebulosity, and he noted that this cluster is at a short distance from the three stars that form the beginning of the unicorn's tail. And that's a reference to the constellation that is nearby. It's actually in the constellation Hydra, but the unicorn he was referring to is the constellation Monoceros. And so the coordinates he gave were right on the border between those two. However, if you go and look at those coordinates, there's no object there. So for quite a long time, this was a bit of a mystery. When you think about how we record where positions are on the sky, Messier had a very difficult job to do. There's no grid marking on the sky that he could reference against. So he was recording offsets from a brighter reference star and recording that difference in position. But he didn't note down which star he used as a reference, so there was no way of going back and figuring out where this cluster was. Independently, the cluster was discovered first by Johann Bode a few years later and Caroline Herschel. So the cluster that we now have identified as M48 appears in observations that they did. And around about the 1960s, astronomer and historian of science Owen Gingrich put together a compelling case that supported the ideas of some previous astronomers who had identified in the general vicinity of Hydra and Monoceros, another open cluster NGC 2548 that they thought might be the candidate. And by reconstructing Messier's methods and by doing a search of the sky nearby, it's fairly clear now that we've uncovered the candidate that Messier actually discovered. But I thought what might be interested is to delve a little deeper into how we've gone from the observations of Messier and the Herschels into the kind of astronomy that we do today. So we have to think about coordinate systems. While on Earth we can establish a system of longitude and latitude, we have to do something similar in astronomical observations. There are many coordinate systems that can be used, but the most common one that we use that is most useful for the observations that we do is to extend that, project that system of longitude and latitude onto the celestial sphere. And so the equator gets projected out into a line of zero degrees, and we call it declination instead of latitude. And instead of longitude, we use a coordinate called right ascension. And that's a little more tied into the actual apparent motions of the stars as they appear to circle on the celestial sphere because of the rotation of the Earth. And so in setting up this system, we now have a fixed spherical grid of coordinates that we can assign any apparent position on the sky. It's complicated by many, many things, not least of which the stars move. Everything is in motion relative to everything else, so there's no fixed reference point that we can compare our measurements to. The system that we use is called the World Coordinate System, and that's simply a geometric mapping that says this pixel on this image corresponds to that point on the sky in right ascension and declination. Um, and um, is encoded in the image or in the information that's packaged with the image um, so that you can reconstruct that mapping at any time. And it might be a simple, very linear mapping, or it might take into account the curvature of the sky or some um, geometric distortions of your instrument. It can be as complicated as you like, um, but it still is encoded in the image itself. But what I thought I'd end with is um, just a demonstration of how far we've come. Because of course, when you think about modern day astronomy, more and more of it is being conducted in terms of very large surveys. You have dedicated telescopes that take image after image after image. And it's really helpful to be able to know where you're looking at in the sky. So there's a very neat website developed by a number of professional astronomers called astrometry.net. And what it does is allow you to upload an image, any image of the sky, and it will use the information contained within the image data itself to figure out where in the sky that image has come from. And the way it works is by connecting groups of four stars called quads and then comparing all the quads in the image or enough quads in the image against some reference list from very large all sky surveys of stars to pick up where in the sky that image is pointing. So you can go out, you can take a picture with your iPhone. As long as you can see some stars, you can upload it 
and it will tell you which stars those are. So I tried this last night. I couldn't take a very good picture of the sky. So what I did is I uploaded an image of M48, the open cluster that we finally decided was Messier's missing object. And this is what it found. It just took a few minutes and correctly identified that this was NGC 2548, otherwise known as M48, and was able to pick out all of these different stars within the image with no problem at all. It could tell me the right ascension and declination of the image, the angular size on the sky, and which way it was pointing. And it could encode all of that in a world coordinate system. They call it. All through this atlas, you will find galaxies that it says, oh yeah, there's an ANSE in this one, or there isn't one in this one, etc. But nobody really knows why they're there, how they form, 